So happy to have Jess Arnold joining us live from our sister station WSA. Of course, that is in Washington, D.C. My goodness, right there uh, near the Capitol you see over her shoulder. What is the latest? What is it like there right now? We know curfews and lockdowns in place. Right, and that curfew that the mayor instituted yesterday is actually lifting. It ended at 6 a.m., but she extended that public emergency declaration until the day after inauguration, so she has the ability to reinstitute a curfew if they feel like it's necessary. Now, this barricade, I don't know if you can quite see it behind me, they've moved it much farther out than it was earlier when that mob rushed into the Capitol earlier. Our D.C. police chief said that D.C. police is coordinating the law enforcement response. They said they're working with Capitol Police. They're working with the National Guard, like you mentioned, as well as some of the other agencies from surrounding districts to try to make sure that we do not see a repeat of what happened yesterday. I have to ask, and I think one of the things that was so stunning watching this is the fact that Riders were able to get through. Is there going to be a look at security today moving forward? That was one of the questions that we kept pressing for yesterday. How exactly were they able to push through that line of Capitol Police and how are they making sure that doesn't happen again? So again, D.C. police said that they are coordinating that response in the hopes of using their expertise here in the nation's capital when they're used to demonstrations to try to make sure that there's not a repeat. And for those who aren't necessarily specifically familiar with the layout of Washington, D.C., and the timeline of all of this, kind of help us out understand it, because this all began really with President Trump speaking at that Stop the Steal rally. Um, kind of how far away was that? And, and I know the president's saying we're going to march towards the Capitol. We're going to walk that way. Um, those events, kind of explain it to us, what led up to the moments when they're actually breaching through, tearing down barriers. Sure, yeah. Well, they started at the Ellipse, as you mentioned, which is right in front of the White House near the National Mall, where the president was speaking, saying, hey, let's go over, let's march to the Capitol. Of course, before this week, he had mentioned wild protests and people out of those thousands had already started walking over here to the Capitol until just about an hour or two after the president started his speech. We saw some of them start to break through those Capitol doors. And interestingly enough, our team talked to some people who were out here to support Trump on the ground, but they said not all of them felt like that was the right way to go. And they thought that it actually tainted what they were trying to come out here to say in support of the current president. And Jess, does it look like people are following the curfew? We know that's going to be in effect until after Inauguration Day. You're out there right now. Does it look like people have kind of dispersed? Yeah, right now I don't see anyone out here yet. Again, they were out here a few hours after that curfew started yesterday night. So they might, you know, still be sleeping and start to trickle out here again. They were scheduled pro pro-Trump supporters were scheduled to be out here until today. So we'll have to see if they stick around or if they end up going home. Jess Arnold, be safe. It has been amazing to see the pictures and, and what uh, brave people are willing to do to capture the moments that, uh, that will be in history books uh, in 100 years and our grandchildren and great-grandchildren will be, be looking at it. We do appreciate that in your report from Washington, D.C.